Okay, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. We're going to have the uh, public safety meeting uh, um, come to order for September the 21st. And in advance, I just want to explain about the glasses. I got glasses under glasses. My eyes are dilated from an eye doctor. So I had, and these are what they give you to wear. So I'm not trying to be really cool, just so everybody knows. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Present. Alderwoman Howard. Alderwoman Tyus. Present. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderwoman Boyd. Alderman Bosley. Present. Alderman, okay, thank you, Alderwoman. You're welcome. Alderman Oldenburg. Present. Alderman Norian. Here. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Here. Alderman Page. Present. Chair Vicaro. Present. Okay, our only thing we need to bring up today is going to be the. Well, wait, no, Excuse me, Alderwoman out. Howard is present. Okay, and um, well, let's go ahead and. Uh, okay, uh, Madam, well, I need a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes of the July 14th meeting. So moved. Uh, I'll second it. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Aye. Alderman Orion. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Page. Aye. Chair Vicaro. Aye. Okay, hearing that we've approved the minutes, uh, we're, we're going to uh, discussion on Prop S. We need to uh, pass that. What we need to do now is we did the, the uh, it's in committee, and I apologize. My mind is a little bit out there with this stuff. Uh, my, my eyes have been dilated and I'm a little bit out there from going to the doctor today. Anyway, uh, Prop S is we're going to get together. We're going to spend roughly that million dollars. Uh, what I would say at this point is uh, if the uh, vice chair and Alderwoman Boyd, and Alderwoman Boyd is probably going to have the most knowledge of what's going on with this because she's been doing it since uh, the last few years, uh, they will be part of a subcommittee. So I would ask Alderwoman Boyd, why don't you go ahead and discuss things and uh, Vice Chairman, uh, if, if you would uh, be willing to help on the subcommittee, uh, what would happen there is the subcommittee puts together the recommendations of where we think the money should go. And then they bring it back to the committee. The committee has final approval. Uh, uh, the reason I like having the, Alderwoman Tyus on this. Uh, some of the stuff we've been a little bullied in the past, and I don't think that'll happen with, with the vice chairman helping. So Alderman Boyd, I'm Alderwoman Boyd, I'm gonna let you kind of take over. I'm gonna mute myself. Uh, as far as I know, that's all we need to do. Uh, uh, I would ask the uh, uh, clerk Kennedy. Uh, that's about all we need to do, right? Is approve the subcommittee and move on. You would just need to um, adopt the uh, the uh, resolution, RFP, and yeah. then you can set up your subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so we'll need a motion then to adopt the RFP, the resolution for the RFP, right? So we'll, we'll so first we need to get need to get that out of the way, Mr. Chairman. It, it is just the RFP at this point. The, the resolution okay. would be to adopt the allocations. Okay, so so then we'll need a motion to adopt the RFP. <clears throat> That'll give us where we go from there. So I'll entertain a motion. 
to adopt the RFP? I move that we adopt the RFP for uh, the drafts of the City of St. Louis Court of Alderman request for proposal. Second. Question? Um, is there a second? On yeah. That? Okay, a second. Oh, you're a second. I thought, okay. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Howard. Yes. Oh. Um, as we look this over, we're just now we're not selecting those. We're gonna, I, I assume yes. now, getting ahead of the, the game here, but yeah. this will be given turn the, the selection process, the recommendations will be given to somebody else to vet these organizations and so forth. Right. Yeah, yes. Uh, other one, boy, why don't you go in the yes. but the process is out of woman how it is once this is approved then this goes out to it to post it okay. and then once the people's the organizations come in and with their proposals then we have an organization and that will vet as you say vet the organizations and then they'll grade them then it comes back to our subcommittee and then that's when we pick those organizations. And what we have here is the actual RFP for the organization. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. I was just a little confused. Okay. Forgive me. So okay. that's okay. Yeah. And so um, so we got we got a motion. We have a second on the motion to accept the RFP. Second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. If my computer goes dead, uh, Vice Chair R. Alderwoman Boyd, please take over, but and then I'll get on to my other computer. Alderwoman <laughs> Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. So he doesn't Aye. Have any Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Page. Aye. Chair Vaccaro. Aye. You have 10 aye votes motion. We, we accept my, uh, my your motion. We've accepted the for the RP. And I believe it's Incarnate Word who's who we went to last year. Um, so at this point, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, because my mind's not 100% with us this morning. But uh, at this point, I, I think the vice chair and Alderman Boyd can establish a subcommittee, because uh, the RFP is going to go out, and then that'll come back. They'll be graded from one to whatever. You don't have to follow the grading. Uh, and they will come back, the uh, subcommittee will come back with the recommendations to the full committee to, um, to, to say yes or no. Uh, and as far as I know, I'm very correct about that. Um, does, does anyone have questions or? I do. Sure, well, go ahead. I, I think uh, rather than going on the uh, list, it's by- Woman just... Davis has, well, why don't we go down the list by seniority? Okay. okay the all the woman Davis, uh, go ahead, and I'm going to try to switch uh, to to a different thing here. But all the woman Davis, go ahead with your questions. Thank you very much. I think it's very critical at this point and place and time of um, transparency and most especially correct information that we do not verbalize what is going to be taken place because it is confusing. I'm even sitting here confused and I've been involved in this since the beginning. Uh, so could we please, uh, if the clerk wouldn't mind, uh, putting on the website for the board and also uh, publishing anywhere else that is going to be uh, identified, the RFP process, as well as the uh, indication of process and procedure for selection, because we do have a very specific process and we don't want people to believe it's just aldermen sitting down doing this. 
we got enough problems. So um, if we can put that clarity out as many places as possible, most especially to all aldermen, because we have a lot of new ones, and then uh, to all of our elected officials on the state level and anywhere else public that we can send the information. I just please request that. Thank you. So noted. Uh, uh, Vice Chairman Titus, I believe you'd be next on the list here. And you may have to take over while I try to figure out. Here we go. But you're next up. Could I, could I say one thing, please? Uh, since I'm presenting this RFP, Alderman Bacora, could you let me kind of lead on this? And if yeah, I'm I mean, step, I know Alder Woman Tyus will correct me, but our Alder Woman Davis. And so I just feel that telling who was doing it, she's correct. So we need to just make sure that we're just basic to the point for voting on this OFP because that was my struggle. I wanted to make sure this got out in a timely fashion because we're already behind the eight ball. So I just wanted us to pass this through so we can move. And I don't have a problem with people asking questions because a lot has been put into it. But I'm just please asking if, if I could just lead this charge and if I miss a step, Auto Woman Tyus, Auto Woman Davis, please let me know. I don't have a problem with being corrected. Oh, that's fine. I was just asked to go down the list and that's why I was going down the list and uh, I was just trying to go through the list. But no, unless the vice chair has an issue with that because I think I'm having trouble getting on my computer and my tablet's going to crash. So uh, oh, uh, vice chairman, I know you- I'll take over the meeting, Alderman, okay? Thank you. And then when you get back on, Alderwoman Howard has her hands up. I'd like to recognize Alderwoman Howard, please. Okay, I, for the sake of not, not confusing everybody, I'll hold my questions and I would like to be part of the committee also. If uh, Alderman, uh, Alderwoman Boyd would consider me, I'd appreciate it. Um, so that's all I have. I just ha I had another question, but as, I will defer, take the lead, defer to Alderwoman Davis because you put too much out there and everybody gets confused. So I don't, for the sake of just simplicity, we'll leave it alone, okay? Okay, um, so here's my suggestion is that if anybody has any questions that just can't be held, say them now, but otherwise, why don't we let Alderwoman Boyd go through uh, I, I know the process of what this is gonna be. We will, I agree with Alderwoman Davis that we, put it out everywhere in writing. So even if they, cause sometimes you say one thing and they hear something else, so it'll be out there. So don't rely on what we say verbally. That's what written documentation in is for. Print. In print. <laughs> <laughs> right, so is there anybody that has a question that cannot wait until after she kind of goes through, uh, Alder Woman Boy goes through uh, uh, kind of the process? Okay, Alder Woman Boy, you recognize. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, the process for the Prop S, uh, the RFP is we present to our uh, public safety committee for the Board of Aldermen. They review the, the RFP. They vote on it to vote it out so it can be put on, uh, as Alderman Davis said, all in any site to inform the community and legislation, state and uh, local of this process and what's coming up. So all these organizations will be able to apply. Once it is uh, finished, then um, we have, we'll pick a uh, overseer that will, an uh, organization that will grade those applications. So the Board of Aldermen has nothing to do with that piece. They'll grade the organizations, they'll send it to the subcommittee, then the subcommittee reviews those organizations and then they vote on them. They send it back to the Public Safety Committee and then that's when the Public Safety Committee votes it down or up for whatever organizations that are chosen by the grading. And then uh, we start the process. So we have an overseer, we have an administrator and that's the public safety department. 
And then they are the ones that write the checks to send them out to the organizations. Okay. Um, so let's go through that again. First, the subcommittee gets it, which I agree with Alderwoman Howard that it should be three. It should be an odd number, not an even number. Okay. So um, I, um, if whoever the, uh, the chair wants to appoint, I think it should be a third person. And then the subcommittee goes through and does a recommendation to the full committee after we vet whoever has submitted their uh, proposals. Is that correct, Alderman yes. Floyd? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and then after we vetted that, we make a recommendation to the full committee. Uh, right. Who we, and is there a limit of the number of uh, recommendations we can make or is it just limited by the amount of money? Well, we had looked at in the previous years because they were just giving a lot of money, a little bit of money to a lot of organizations. So the committee recommended to say, okay, let's look at how much money we have and try to give uh, these organizations something that they have to do the work. And so it limited the amount of organizations that we fund. And do we have a, a definite number? I want to say last year we did 15 organizations. If I'm off, uh, was, somebody could tell me. It was about that, but it's limited to the $1 million. Uh, yeah, so, but the 15 right, yeah. divide the $1 million. Well, yes, you, can, you can divide that million between every organization or between whatever number. I think what happened in the past was there were only like 5,000 here, 10,000 there, and some people said, no, thanks, you know that's not even enough to help us. So I think what they decided last year, and other women, boy, you could correct me if I'm wrong. I believe what they decided last year would give more than 50 or 75,000. They'd give a larger amount to less organizations because they felt it'd be more helpful. Am I wrong on that? That's how we came up with 15. Right, so, so but you're not limited to the number, you're limited to the amount of money. Okay. And right. how that money is divided. Um, and, and, and it could be three people on the committee. It could be more than that. Well, I just always like an odd number. So oh, then, right. No, right. No, no, I agree. It could be more than three. It's going to be up to, to the two, you know, to okay. two of you to figure out how many people want to be on that committee. Okay. You know. Okay. So I'm just trying to follow all the women Boyd. So after we get this, we, we decide about the organizations. Then we send it to the full committee. Then the full committee uh, votes on it and sends yes. it out to the board. No, yes, ma'am. Well, it, thought, yeah, we vote on it. We That's vote on it, but I, I don't think that the full board votes on it. I think it's no. just out of committee, and that's it. Right. Okay. But what? So when we vote on it, where does it go? It goes to the uh, public and, safety to be distributed. Right, but I'm saying when public safety uh, pro proves it by resolution, then that's it. That's right. it. Right. right, right, okay. And I heard you say something in there though about it, some kind of administrator or somebody else that- Yeah, so, they that. Have, so we have an administrator that oversees, once we send them uh, John Doe organization, then they have somebody that cuts the checks to John Doe and they monitor those organizations. But okay, that's after the full committee has voted with a resolution. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and how do we get this? The person John Doe or the organization who is going to be in charge of uh, administering and cutting the checks or whatever else? What else do, that they do? So, so what happens is once they get the information that said that this was they these organizations were approved, then that person contacts those organizations and they set their account up so it can go to the uh, uh, comptroller's office. And so once it goes through the comptroller's office, it goes to the registers, then the comptroller's office, and once it goes through there, then once they uh, that administrator starts sending the information in, then that's when they cut the checks. And every quarter, because I start pushing to say every quarter, once they start getting payments, then the administrator needs to monitor those organizations to make sure they're doing the work that they say they're doing. Okay, but what I'm asking, I guess, is 
how do who picks the administrator? How do they get picked? That goes through public safety. They hire the administrator because public safety is the one, the public safety department. They hire okay. the administrator. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because you said public, and I was trying yeah, to figure out okay, public safety yeah, committee. Dan, Dan, Dan Isom's, it's under Dan Isom's thing. And how is what is that process like? So once we send that over to him that we have made uh, recommendations. Then does he put out a separate organization or uh, request for proposal to hire an organization? Do you know how that works? No, no. no, they already, you know, uh, hired a person. Well, we just lost them, but they <laughs> hired a person. <laughs> Sam, it's been a struggle, trust me. So uh, that person is no longer there. So now we have to wait on them to hire another administrator. Okay. And so they do that through the personnel department or through, do you know how they hire them? Outer Woman Davis, do you know if it's through personnel or through public safety? Uh, I'll, <clears throat> many of you knew Charlene when she was there. Uh, she was in charge of the disbursement of funds for various contracts and monitoring. And then also they had another staff member there. So it's members of the staff of the public okay. safety department who handle that and work with the comptroller's office to send over those requests for expenditures. Okay. And that's something that we really need to keep clear with the public. Yes. All the persons have no rights to disperse any money. We are right. not allowed. Right. We right. It. We cannot sign our names on a check. There is not a petty cash fund. There is not a quarter that we are allowed to touch. All of that will be done after the recommendations are made through the executive branch of city government, which is the public safety department. Right. And they hire the administrator, correct? Auto woman it's Davis. a regular staff person in the public safety department. Cause the way we're saying it, it sounds like there's another company or entity. It is a it is a function okay. of the public safety department. Right. right. Okay. And then when it goes to the comp comptroller, the treasurer actually does does the dispensing as they do our checks. Or is it? Or uh -uh. it's the, the treasurer. Comptroller. Does, it's the comptroller in this case. Right. Right. Because if you look at checks system. and a lot of the stuff, it has the treasurer's name on it. Okay. Right. It's ha and that's that new system, Auto Woman Tires, that okay. uh, Comptroller Green set up. Now, I, well, their office says they, they, I don't think that they think they set it up either. I've not found too many departments who think that's a great new system, but okay, that's another conversation. Okay, right. so it is not us. It is the Public Safety Department, not committee. There's a right. difference between right. department and committee. Right. Okay, and they have a full, they have staff members that do that. And then they over they have an oversight of the organizations to make sure they're doing what they're supposed to do. Is that right. correct? Right, right. Okay. And then they cut checks <laughs> quarterly, week. How are the checks cut? It's you a know? reimbursement uh, process. So the organizations send the invoices in and then they reimburse them for the invoices that were sent in. Okay. That's great. Uh, all the and, woman ties. Yes. They use the same process and procedure as a CDA uh, okay. agency. Okay. So uh, that's how they do it. Same as CDA. And mm -hmm. do we do we have any have we ever had any funds left over? Yes. Oh yes. Yes. And we had last year when we had the funds, we wanted to train the organizations, the small organizations that did not receive funding to walk them through the process. And then uh, the person that was over it, he just did it voluntarily and called each organization in and went back through the whole process so they could understand it better for the next year. Okay, so we did actually spend up the funds on training? No, no, no we didn't do it. We still had a $15,000 left. Right. And what happens with that? Does that carry over? No, yeah. we, yes, we can reallocate that. That's the one part I do know. Uh, we can reallocate that. So, okay. Uh, and, and I don't know, all the women, boy, do you know, is there anything left over? Is just 15 from the last time? Right. 
So, so we can, I guess the subcommittee will look into that, but they can be reallocated. That part I do know. I, I've been, I, I usually don't get involved in this process. I've always left it up to the vice chairman and- We have $15,411 left. Okay. And do we have any kind of prohibition about the same organizations getting it over and over or also getting like two grants? Because one of the things that I, I remember when I first was a new alder person, when we did 5050 sidewalk, stick, uh, the sticker got so far behind that we separated it into two contracts, which worked for about three or four years. And then sticker got both contracts and we were back behind again. So can people get multiple contracts, organizations, not people? No, what we did was we started uh, a process that when we, after we got the organizations, then the administrator will see if they got any funding from CDA. And then we also said we added to this RFP if any organization has received funding for this Prop S for more than five years, they could not apply. So there's a limit of five years. Yeah, in a row. because it has start happening. We had the same organizations getting the same money every year. And I was like, that's not fair. So we stopped that. Okay. Um, and the training, was that to train people who did not get the or, um, money so that they could be better trained to how to apply for the? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, does anybody else have any questions that are pointed? I was just trying to make sure we kind of got it out there um, so it was kind of uh, understood so people wouldn't. And I want to thank uh, both the Auto Woman um, 27th and the 19th because they helped a lot. Um, Auto Woman Howard. Is there any in, in the vetting process, is there anything that looks at where the most children live in the city of St. Louis by the latest um, um, census reports that, you know, that people are, there's that, that those sections of the city are being served by those organizations. Well, that's where the uh, monitoring came in for oh. us. To, yeah. For us to actually see those organizations and, uh, and it was ironic because we had such a struggle to get the payments for the organizations. Mm -hmm. And so we had then that's when we could go monitor them. And then that's when they would go into those sites and then actually see them perform or do the work that they said they were doing, how many kids they had. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that's through public safety that's overseas. That's that. an administrator. Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. You're welcome. I actually used to be a monitor when I first moved to St. Louis for the free breakfast and lunch program. And we It was a federal program and I worked under director of public safety trip at that time. And we had to go out to all the different sites to monitor to make sure they, they were following the rules about the free breakfast and lunches because um, the uh, they had rules about if you opened a, a, a package, then you had to throw the rest of the package away if the kids didn't eat it. So it was kind of a difficult situation. Although we came up with a unique uh, situation, which we just put nice clean trash bags in the trash can and put those that good food in there. So it, all they had to do was throw it away. So we were able to work it so we didn't waste the food. Um, are there other questions? Other concerns? Um, does the uh, chair, are you ready to take back over again? I, I'm, I'm sure, I think if we're ready, if we're, if we're done, I am. Yes. Uh, and, and I will explain, because I'm getting texts about the concern about why am I wearing these silly glasses? And I have glasses under the glasses. <laughs> um, it's what the eye doctor gave me. Uh, I would probably have preferred something more cool, but uh, my eyes are dilated. And when I'm looking at the screen, it, it's like, I try without, and it's almost like needles, you know. So that that's why the silly glasses. Um, if there was no other discussion, then yeah, I think we're 
set to adjourn and I would ask the subcommittee to, you know, uh, consider who's on there. I do believe in other one boy, you could tell me again if I'm wrong, the subcommittee has to come from a committee of people that are in the in this committee. Right. They'd have to they have to sit on the public safety. And I wanted to ask Alderman Bossy, would he uh mind sitting on this subcommittee with us? But we can even do a show of hands. Who wants to be on it? it I can tell you. It is very tight. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. I, I would. I would say anybody that wants to be on it should get a hold of either Alderwoman Boyd or the uh, chairman. Uh, and we're supposed to be saying right now. Yes. And, and, and we heard you there. So she's going to get with you there, Alderman Boyd. Um, it 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 is a. Uh, really time consuming and need a lot. And um, I can tell you, no matter who you pick, there's gonna be about 10 that don't get picked that are not gonna be pleased going, well, they didn't pick me. No, no that's that's right. Right. That's that's right. speaking. I think they just uh, wanted to be on this committee. Oh, oh, Alderman Boyd, we did hear you. Yes. Yeah. So is there any, any other discussion on this? There's no other discussion than I guess. Can I ask the question? Oh, sure. I know okay. we had a motion and a second. Did we vote on this? You know, probably not. Um, I thought we did, actually. No. No. Okay. So we'll need okay. okay. So if we have a motion, thank you, all the women. So we have a motion and a second. Is there a call for previous roll? We don't have a previous roll, do we? You more right. than minutes. And we have too many people who've added on, so. Okay, so Madam Clerk, please call the roll. And I apologize, thank you for reminding me. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Vicaro. Aye. Alderman, I'm so sorry, excuse me. Too many papers. Alderman Davis. Aye. Alderwoman Howard. Aye. Alderwoman Tyus. Aye. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderwoman Boyd. Aye. Alderman Bosley. Aye. Alderman Odenberg. Aye. Alderman Narayan. Aye. Alderwoman Clark Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Page. Aye. Chair Vicaro. Aye. 10 aye votes. 10 aye votes. We passed out the motion to pursue the RFP. Do we have a uh, motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll see everybody next week. <laughs>